picking hay. So we're doing some, oh, some custom work. So they spread the manure in this field. Uh, we disked it uh, with our with our our disks a little heavier than this guy's disk. So we disked it for him. Now we're ripping it, and that's how we get uh, the manure in the soil. Hoping to uh, demo a Wilcox ripper with uh, clod busters on the back of it. It kind of one of the sales sales reps reached out. I said, "Well." Bring it on out. Mine works really good, but I wouldn't mind testing out a clod buster. Their shanks don't go as deep as this one does, but um, I don't necessarily think we need to go that deep all the time, so whatever. Be interesting to try out, but we're almost all done. We've got this little bit of demo work to do, and that's it, so it might be a next year, a next year demo. We'll see. See, this is a problem when we get in a hurry and we don't do, this comes down to management again. This water comes out and swirls and constantly eats away at this ditch bank. I'm currently looking for a backhoe so we can fill this stuff in without having to be in the field. I can reach across the ditch, pack it, fill it. But when we're doing field prep work, we usually come in with the loader and, and push dirt out this way and fill it up all along the ditch, fill in these spots. But um, I don't know why. <sighs> poor, poor management, we didn't get that done. Now we've got, this is gonna be like this now for uh, four alfalfa years, one mix, and one mix five, maybe six years if this goes to wheat or triticale. So yeah, a backhoe would be handy. I'm supposed to actually go look at one. This it's an old one. It's a 1990. It's a 90s model. But backhoes don't make us money, right? They're they're kind of a difficult thing to own. You need it. You, you fix stuff. Um, they're super handy, very helpful. But it's not out there baling hay. It's not out there cutting hay. It's not picking up hay. It's not hauling hay. It's just fixing little things. So I can I can hire the irrigation district. They've got a backhoe. And they do work for us. I looked up last year. I think I spent about, I think it was $6,000 last year hiring them to do stuff for us. Well, I mean, man, that's pretty cheap if you think about it. But how many things were there I did not hire them to help with? Because I thought, uh, we'll leave it. We'll do it with a front end loader and a shovel or whatever. Uh, or just don't do it at all. Because I've got a lot of ditches, a lot of f several fields. These fields I'm in right now, when the, when the, when the rake goes from one field to the other, the dryer has to climb out, close the rake because the crossing from di uh, from field to field where the ditch is is so narrow that rake won't go over it. But it would make us a, a little bit, on a, not a lot more efficient, but a little more efficient and better for the driver if he just goes, goes from one field to the next. Well, I would put some pipe in there and then I would cover it up, but it's stuff I would need a backhoe for. If I had a backhoe, I could do that. I could make uh, make these fields that when they when you have contiguous fields one after another, it uh, and it make my drivers a lot happier because I used to be the rake driver, 
and I would hate it when you had a hundred acres and you had to open and close that rake uh, three or four different times. Well, the first time for the first field and then close, open, close. Yeah, so four times just because the bridge is too narrow to the next field. Well, if I had a backhoe, I could fix all that because I've got several fields I would just do it. Then I'd tell my rake drivers, you're welcome. Again, I know I've said things about employees in the past and some guys have called me out. They said, you're, you, you don't be so negative. And you're absolutely right. I don't, I shouldn't be so negative. That guy's a great guy. He's a hard worker. It's just learning. It's a learning experience for him. It's a learning experience for myself and Brian, hopefully. Oh, it doesn't happen anytime soon. Finally, planting. Not the drill. Oh, we gotta run, catch up to him. This planter is probably as old as I am. Planter's probably 20 years old. My dad actually bought it from the neighbor. Well, they either bought it together uh, and then my dad bought it out from him. I don't remember the story, but it's old. It just keeps on going. But look, it's set up, or this is why we don't have real big planters. Like he's he's gonna make a perfect pass right here. It's gonna end up, end up perfect. If we had a bigger one, you end up with like a little narrow slice and you got to go over the whole thing with that big planter. I talked about in that last video why we don't run real big planters. It's because these borders there and there are set up on the rakes. Um, being able, having even number of rakes, not, um, not, not even the swather. I mean, it, it is a swather, but it's really two swath paths. So it's a, it's, it's a 15 foot head. And so every, the, the width of the border has to be divisible, dividable, divisible by 30. So 15 times two, because two passes on the swather is one pass with the rake. So it's everything's divisible by 30. And that's kind of what we go off of. So all these borders are all divisible by 30, but they're all different numbers just because of, it all has to do with how big the ditch is, how steep the field is, um, how much water we can push down the, uh, down the field. Here he comes. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully he knows how many passes or how many borders he can do um, in this field. Cause like I said, these, these borders, these borders might be more narrow than that other field we were in where he uh, had the plug. Hopefully they also quit using that seed. I would, personally, I would rather have just thrown that seed away. Yeah, it's valuable, but man, the problem we just had and we're planting I think we put 30 pounds per acre so uh, when you're when it's contaminated with a bunch of rocks and stuff how much are you really putting down Oh no! Look at this one little stripe that's left. Oh, that sucks. See? Not running GPS, you don't get perfect passes. That's why I love GPS and I argue with the boss, my dad. Why we need GPS? Oh well. Oh, that little stripe. But it doesn't go the whole way, so he'll probably, well, I, he should probably just go the whole way. Whatever. Good. He's gonna clean it up. That would be 
That'd be terrible if he just left that, but oh well. It's all right. I said it's it's not a huge, huge problem, but hopefully he does, this doesn't happen every single border. That would stink. So that, there's two rollers. There's a front roll and the back roller. The front roller is prepping the bed for the seed. The seed falls down and the back roller covers it. Super simple, very basic planter, but it works great, uh, especially for this flat soil. When we have soil uh, property or fields rather that are real steep, we run it, we'll, we'll actually plant with a drill and that'll keep the water from washing the seed away. And we've also had in the, in the past, if you get a real heavy rain, which every farmer will know this if you're not drilling it in, if we get a real heavy rain after we plant with this brilliant, the rain will actually land so hard it, 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 it knocks, it, the seed will come out of the ground and then it won't, it won't germinate. We'll have to replant again, which that stinks, but um, people are driving by like, what is this guy doing with that fuzzy thing on a stick? I don't realize it's a GoPro. But um, yeah, anyways, so any other planting questions? It's so basic, that's why I've not really filmed it very much. It's uh, flat ground, we use the Brilliant. Steep ground, we use the, we use the Great Plains drill. We don't, and uh, the no-till drill. Oh, the swather's right there. He stopped. Is it lunchtime? Holy smokes. It's lunchtime. I have literally just filmed all day. I haven't really helped, but it's Saturday. Um, we haven't started hauling hay yet. They're kind of waiting on me, I guess, but um, it's a good day to film, not swamped. Woo, this week was our... Oh, I had to take a delivery uh, up up north. And we had a blowout on the way up there on, on the on one of the trucks. My AC in the squeeze wasn't working. The barns are super small and extremely tight. It took me six and a half hours, not including driving up there, not including driving back, and not including the flat. It took me six and a half hours to unload five trucks because the barns are such a pain in the rear. Kind of wish I had the camera that day. I'm glad I didn't. I was super grouchy because I hate it. Oh my gosh, that place is the worst. But anyways, next year I'm not gonna go. My buddy Chad from the, um, who bought the other squeeze on that trip. I'm just gonna pay him to do it next year because it was, it's miserable. I've done it several times. I just, I'm done with it. Way too old for that stuff. <laughs> a, lo a lot of you are probably wondering, how do you, how do they put the seed in the planter? Uh, we do it by hand. <laughs> we, he, he backs that up to this trailer and then they just, use those bags and they cut them open with a pocket knife and dump it in so it's pretty uh pretty basic yeah nothing really to re bother record him doing it it's not <laughs> it's not it's not much okay there's five loads ready it's probably gonna make seven that's a little too much for leonard to move on his own so i'm gonna go Jump in the squeeze. We're gonna load it. We'll load in the field. We'll let him unload. That's I like. I like the control I have of the uh, of where the hay goes. I watch it. Or I load it. I fill out the tickets myself. I tell them where to take it. So that's why I prefer. I prefer to load. Man, we had some bit some meetings. My dad and Brian and at least in the office on man next year because my dad he's not old but he just he's 62. He wants to enjoy his life and. And, and do more things with my mom there you know go on a vacation or two or three in the summertime which I don't blame him he's worked uh, I mean, he's worked hard his whole life so I need to transition into the office more I need to be keeping an eye on on inventories I need to keep an eye on on what what's going in and what's going out um, just a lot of things I need to I need to personally be watching myself to grow into his spot so um, yeah, I told Leonard, we've got to have another guy, another good guy next year. And, and the goal is to have Leonard be kind of take over one of my roles. Someone, uh, Brandon Leister, I think sent me a deal that said, um, tr don't try to hire someone to do a hundred percent of what you do. Hire two people that can do 60 to 70% of what you do. Then you've got 120 to 140% of what you do covered. Cause if you try to hire one person to do everything you do, you will always be disappointed and you will be constantly hiring and firing people. So Leonard, who's come from the ground up, I mean, he started here when he was 16 or 17, loading bales in pickups. 
Uh, now he runs a squeeze. There he is right now, watching the squeeze. Uh, and and now he loads trucks. So when when he has someone, an employee under him, you know, giving him an excuse on on, on in the barn where we sell hit by the bale, he can say no. I I, I grew up doing that, or I should say I grew up. I did this, you know, six seven years ago. Don't don't feed me that line of BS. And then when there's an issue with the squeeze, and that guy says, oh, I couldn't do something for whatever reason, again he can say no. I, I used to do this, don't feed me that line of BS. So it's extremely important, not every business, but especially this business to, to, to try to hire within, especially for what I'm trying to accomplish by having someone be that 70%, 60 to 70% of what I do. It's extremely important. And I think Leonard will be great for that. Uh, just, uh, I had that talk with him yesterday. I want you to keep growing with this company. I want I want you to be here for 20 years. You're uh, you're the future. You're part of the future. The other parts men will. When Brian Brian's gonna want to slow down, he's just a few years younger than my dad. He's gonna want to slow down. I'm not gonna be able to be out there running a bailing crew. It's just not gonna happen. And man, well, uh, he's a almost 10 years younger than Brian. So. Um, He's the other. He's the other piece to this puddle puzzle puddle. He's the other piece to the puddle puzzle. Dang it! He's the other piece to the puzzle on the future of this place. So, okay. Time to get the squeeze. I'm gonna go load some pockets. I need to bring my lunch with me because I'm hungry and it's past lunchtime. <laughs>